In this video, we'll be reviewing the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB and XLR microphone. I've been using this microphone for several months now in a plethora of different situations. Outside, inside, big spaces, small spaces, webcam interviews, podcasts, videos, all the different kinds of applications that you would be using this mic for, I've probably done it in the past several months and that's why I've waited this long to do a review on this microphone. I'm gonna start the video off by showing you the physical attributes and what you get with this microphone. Then we're gonna dive into how the microphone sounds in different situations. How's it sound as a USB mic versus XLR? What happens happens when you add effects like EQ and compression? How does it stack up against other microphones? And then I'll close out the video with my final thoughts and who I think this microphone is for. I'll have links to everything that I talk about in this video in the description below, as well as timestamps to everything in the play bar, description, and first comment. When you first get the microphone inside the box, you'll see directions, an XLR cable, the microphone, USB cable, tabletop tripod stand, and microphone clip. One thing that doesn't come in the box, which I would highly suggest getting, is one of these foam pop filters. They're pretty cheap, but it helps with all of your plosives. So when I go pop, 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 versus pop, I'm sure you can tell a difference there. Getting into the physical attributes of the microphone, there's only two things that I don't really like about it, and they're by no means deal breakers, but I'll bring them up in the beginning just so you know. The first one is the light on the front of the microphone is too bright. I love the fact that it gives you a physical indication as to whether the microphone is plugged into the USB or not, but I wish the amount of light that came from the indicator was far less. I don't know if you can tell right now on the camera, but when you're in person, if you're in somewhat of a darker room, this thing just illuminates the whole room. The second thing isn't that big of an issue at all. It's that the microphone uses mini USB instead of USB-C and the cable that comes with the microphone goes to the old school USB, which just means that you'll need a dongle to go to USB-C from the older USB. On the front of the microphone is the on and off switch. Now this will turn on or off the signal whether the microphone is in USB or XLR mode, but when you turn the microphone off and it's still plugged into the USB, the blue light will still light up just to indicate that it is still plugged into your computer. Now this is where the whole bright light thing comes into play. A lot of people may have their computers in their bedrooms or in their living rooms, and it would be nice that if you just flip the switch off, the light would turn off. And then if you flip the switch on, the light would turn on. That way, if you were sleeping, the light isn't just illuminating your whole room while you're trying to go to bed or watch a movie in your living room. Just to give you an example, here's without any lights on in the room. It's nighttime and this could be something out of a scary movie, but I'm just trying to show you that I can use this as a flashlight in my room right now. Looking at the bottom of the microphone, we have the XLR output, USB, headphone jack, and volume button. For those that aren't aware, let me address why this microphone has such a massive competitive advantage over some other more expensive microphones in the fact that it is both USB and XLR. Up until recent times, let's say, all microphones like the Shure SM7B have been XLR microphones, and it's an amazing way to transport audio. The technology behind it like still baffles me. My vocal cords inside my mouth are vibrating, it creates sound pressure, and the way that our ears work is our eardrums will vibrate at the same pressure that the vocal cords are and all the other things that are coming into your ear so it can comprehend it into the brain, which is like mind-blowing how humans work. But when you're using a microphone, my vocal cords vibrate, it hits this capsule, it vibrates it much like our eardrums, and that creates an electrical current in the microphone that goes into an XLR cable like this, and then that will go into something called an interface. This is the device that would change it from electrical current to ones and zeros that a computer can actually comprehend because it can't comprehend XLR signal. The amazing thing about a microphone that has both XLR and USB is the fact that they took all the technology that's in something like this and crammed it into a microphone. My mind is also blown by that. That's so cool. With all that in mind, there is such a huge competitive advantage and convenience to having a microphone that goes straight into a USB port as opposed to taking your XLR into an interface and then into the computer. But 
just in case you want to use higher end interfaces, this microphone does have that capability of using an XLR or a USB. Plus there's other awesome ins and outs on the bottom of the microphone too. The headphone jack works great and I wasn't really sure how it was gonna interact with my computer when I first attached it, but it's the same as if you're hitting the volume up or volume down keys on your keyboard, except you have all of that accessibility right next to you when you're recording. When using it as a USB microphone, you can adjust the gain directly in your preferences menu on a Mac. I'm not sure how you would do this in Windows, but I'm sure it's somewhat similar. Now, if you're comparing the USB component of this microphone to other microphones on the market, say like the Blue Yeti, this one has the capability to do XLR and the Blue Yeti does not. You can go to the Yeti Pro, which has XLR outputs, but this one's cheaper than that. I don't know how the Yeti Pro sounds, but I know how this sounds and I'm completely fine with the quality that I get and all of the features that I get for the price of this microphone. Another competitive advantage that this microphone has over something like the Yeti or the Snowball or even the Shure SM7B is the fact that it's handheld or can be handheld. I love that they did this with this microphone because if I have my Shure SM7B, it's not really meant to be held like this. Same with other condenser USB microphones. Those are not meant to be held in the hand. They're meant to be on some sort of boom arm, a desktop or little tripod and microphone stand, something like that, which this can do all of those things and you can hold it in your hand. So that's cool. Nice job, Audio Technica. The build of this microphone is sturdy. I feel like if I were to drop this, I wouldn't have any problems with it still working how it's supposed to work. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's a Shure SM58, which is considered like the tank of the industry and the most indestructible microphone. But unless you're putting this thing through a whole bunch of flames and dropping it off buildings, I'm pretty sure this microphone is going to last you. With that, let's move on to how this microphone sounds. And hopefully you could tell throughout this whole video whether or not you like the sound of the microphone because the whole thing's been recorded on this microphone. I think this microphone sounds better when you take advantage of something called the proximity effect. What that means is the closer you get to this microphone, the better, in my opinion, it sounds. It has more bass the closer you are in proximity to the microphone, as opposed to if I was back here, it probably doesn't sound as good which you have to keep this in mind if you were using something like this tabletop microphone stand. When you put this on a table further away from you, you're not gonna get the most out of your microphone as if it were right in front of your face. Now this is for people that are okay with having the microphone in the shot if you're using this microphone for video, but if you're using this microphone for podcasting or any other type of audio only format, then you don't really have to worry about that. And I would really encourage you to get the microphone as close as possible to you with that foam filter on there. A great way to do that is with something like this boom arm. If you're in this type of situation where I'm in front of a computer and you wanna make sure you have space beneath you to have your keyboard and mouse and all those things, like you have to have your hands free. If it were down on the desk further away from me, it would sound something like this. But if I put it closer to my face, you get that nice crisp proximity effect. The other reason why it helps is because it helps eliminate all of the other reflections that are happening in the room from my voice. So if I were to talk right now, what's really happening is my voice comes from my mouth, it hits the computer in front of me, it's gonna bounce off the wall, it's gonna bounce off this wall, that wall, go all over the place and then come back into the microphone. By me being closer to the microphone, I'm now providing a direct line from my mouth, which is the source to the reception on the microphone, and it's close. That way it can be louder and cancel out all of the other sounds that are reflections coming back and thus getting rid of what you may think of as reverb or echo. A third option that you could do besides this or the boom arm is have a little bit more sturdier of a tabletop stand that's a little bit taller. I wouldn't really use this unless you were doing something like a podcast exclusively. I would mainly stay with something like a boom arm if you're somebody that's going to be creating a lot of content in front of your computer. The reason why I don't like using these in front of my computer is because if you need to put it right in front of you, it's going to be right where the keyboard is. You might be asking yourself whether there's a difference in the sound quality of going to the XLR or the USB, or if 
it just sounds the same coming out of the USB or the XLR. Well, this whole time I've been talking, I've actually been showing you down at the bottom the differences in the signal between the USB and the XLR, and can you tell the difference? One of the biggest questions I had about using this for something like a Zoom call or a video podcast that was remote was the issue of audio latency, and if it did occur using this with something like a webcam or the camera on my computer. I would ask the people that I was talking to, whether it be on Zoom or Skype or any of those programs, if they saw any latency between my visual feed and this microphone, and they didn't notice anything on their end. So from my personal experience, I haven't had any issues with audio latency using this microphone as a USB microphone instead of something that was connected to my computer. Now you're listening to my desktop microphone. This is directly behind my camera. This is how iPhone headphones sound going directly into the computer. The microphone's right here. How's it sound? This is what it would sound like if you were to use AirPods. Does it sound any better, any worse than the wired? Let's move on. And here is the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB slash XLR microphone. Hopefully it sounds better than all of the previous examples that you just heard. And now you're listening to a much more expensive microphone, the Shure SM7B. And it gets even more expensive if you buy something like a cloud lifter. And you also have to think about the interface to get that audio signal into the computer. So all in probably 500 plus bucks. To be honest, I actually don't like the flat signal that comes from the Shure SM7B. Where this microphone really shines is when you start to push it in terms of EQ and compression because the amount of information in there, it just has a bunch of clarity and other things that you can bring out by adding EQ and compression. Here's the Shure SM7B with audio processing, and here's the Shure SM7B without audio processing. Here's the Audio-Technica with some audio processing. There's compression, EQ, a noise gate, maybe a little bit of denoise going on. I've wanted to do the bulk of this review without any audio processing so people get a clear understanding of what they're getting if they were to purchase this microphone. Some of my final opinions on this microphone to kind of wrap this up. Overall, this microphone is so efficient for any kind of content creator. Perfect example of this is somebody from USA Today reached out to me for a piece that they were creating and they wanted a soundbite for their podcast and some of their blog posts. I didn't have my Shure SM7B around and I just needed to get a microphone really quick. So we hopped on a call. I grabbed this microphone. I could plug it in and immediately it just works. You just go to the menu, say you want this microphone and it just, it just works. I love that. I love when technology eliminates all of the friction from you and your creative ideas. I took this on a trip and instead of taking my Shure SM7B, I just used this microphone because it was small and compact and I just had my laptop and this microphone and I made internet videos on the road and it was so much simpler than having to take my cloud lifter and my audio interface. It's an efficient microphone to use. It has both XLR and USB. Again, the only things that I really dislike about this microphone are how bright the light is and the fact that it's the older school USB, but you don't really need to worry about that if you get a dongle. And if your computer has normal USB connections, that's not an issue at all. So at this point, I've been getting DMs on Instagram about which mic to buy for this kind of circumstance where you're in front of a computer or maybe for podcasting and it's something where you want to go a step up from maybe just using an audio recorder or your microphone on your cell phone or something like that. My first recommendation since I got this microphone has been the Audio-Technica because it's a no-brainer. The fact that you can hold it with your hand makes it so much better for those situations when you're on the road and maybe you don't have access to a boom arm and you can just hold the microphone in front of you for all of those videos. In fact, most of my videos where I was using this microphone, I was probably just holding the microphone as opposed to having it on a boom arm. I'll have links to everything that I talked about in this video in the description below, especially the microphone. I think if you're on the fence about getting a microphone like this, you should definitely invest in the Audio-Technica 2005 USB microphone. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and if you like video tech tutorials and this gear review, and you're new here, not subscribe, you can subscribe. Leave some comments down below on what you thought of this whole process. Was this a good review? Was it too long? Uh, did you get all the information that you needed? I hope so. If not, then I'll try and answer questions in the comments down below. I hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance. Bye.